Each team with eight wins. Cooper Roth kicks it off. Aleva Hifo, the freshman from the six-yard line on the return. And Hifo finds the seam across the 30-yard line. Aleva Hifo to the 45. Kevin Prosser with the stop. It's a 39-yard return in great field position. BYU is one of the best third-down teams in the country, and it's third and short this time. Mangum wants to go deep. And Colby Pearson, the intended target, it's fourth down on the way as Rico Gafford, the junior, was on the coverage. They go two tight ends on second down. Allen down the middle, and he's got a line drive for Tanner Gentry, his most frequent target in a first down. And what you're going to see is 6'5", 222. Josh Allen is very good at standing in the pocket, pressure all around him, and it's that arm talent at the end that shows up. He found Gentry right down the hash. BYU's defense trying to get off the field on this first Wyoming drive. And the sophomore quarterback, Josh Allen, sails it incomplete. Jake Mulhart, the intended target, and Dion Lake, the freshman quarterback who's really come on. Very strong coverage. And Mulhart is 6'6", 230 pounds, and this was extremely well, well thrown by Josh Allen. And he's giving his big receiver room up top to go make a play. Hannah Mangum is not that guy, so he has better arm talent, and he's actually better made for, I think, what Ty Detmer wants to do offensively in the long run, so we'll see how that works out here this evening. Tanner Mangum, 8-4 and four as a starter last year in 12 starts, and he relies on Jamal Williams here, and the leading running back in BYU history to the 40-yard line. First down run for Williams, and that's a nice luxury to have for Mangum in his first start. And that's a great way to put it, Jason, is when you can turn it and hand it off to a guy like Williams that's been ultra productive when he's stayed healthy. He's a make-you-miss type of guy, but behind this zone scheme that BYU likes to run, he's also very and that's what you saw in that play. One cut downhill and get to green grass. 36-yard run for Williams who is from Fontana, north of here, east of Los Angeles. Williams again breaks free, and Jamal Williams loses the football, and Wyoming has three guys surrounding it. The Cowboys create the turnover as Lucas Waka plucks it from the turf. And it is raining fairly lightly currently, but it's the second fumble in well over 700 touches by Jamal Williams. It's only the fourth, fifth time actually he put the ball on the ground, but only the second time the opposition has recovered it. So that is news in itself that Williams actually coughs one up. Well, we'll see if he ends up in after the first quarter. That would be the logical time when you might see a break in the decision, and that is just dropped by Tanner Gentry. Rare drop for the leading receiver for Wyoming and this rivalry game has been ragged. 0 for 7 on third down tonight combined. Yeah, this is as simple as it gets. It's just basically a wave screen and number four, Tanner Gentry, very sure-handed most of the time and he was going to catch that ball and go inside and catch the wave of his offensive lineman coming down and he just simply didn't look it in. That's a mishandled snap. Ethan Wood, ball is on the turf inside the five-yard line, and this is going to be big news for BYU no matter what. The rain in San Diego is coming into play. And it's just a matter of really discipline and focus in conditions that aren't ideal Morgan Unga is going to be the guy that actually gets to the punter wood initially and leaves the ball on the ground but average rainfall in San Diego is 10 inches per year it's coming down in buckets Mangum on the run Tanner Mangum touchdown Tanner Mangum 
is not Taysom Hill running the ball, but he can move with it. A very good decision, a two-man route, receiver tight end to the corner. LG Brown was the running back going to the flat, and nobody was open, so Mangum tucks it and gets into the end zone. A great decision ends up in the end zone for Mangum on that play. Red Orman's extra point is good, and BYU has the first lead off the turnover. Tanner Mangum after the Taysom Hill injury leading this offense. And a good sign for BYU. You can see him looking off to the right initially. Nobody's there. Get what you can get. In this case, he gets into the end zone, but the reason it happened is Ethan Wood, the punter for B or Wyoming, just simply does not look the ball in. So look for Wyoming to try to get to the edges earlier in this one than normal. On the ground again. This time, Hill is wrapped up at the 45. Fred Warner, the California native, takes him down. Fourth down. Patience that it's taken for Hill. First year coach Kalani Sataki has seen quite a bit of it from Taysom Hill as Jamal Williams runs his way all the way across the 30 yard line. Another tough run for Williams, finally tackled by Wingard. And typically, Williams is running behind a zone scheme where that big offensive line doubles up, they get to the second level, but there was some relocation going there. Tanner. Baldery, the tight end, was relocating and actually sealed the edge to that right side. And then Jamal Williams was decisive once again. That's what that play was all about, is get one cut and get north and south immediately. Gain of 13 for Williams, who has been the workhorse for sure today. Opening up the play action this time. Colby Pearson intended. It's intercepted. Picked off easily by Wingard, his second interception of the year, and he's still going out of bounds into BYU territory. And simply not a very good decision by Tanner Mangum. Colby Pearson, as you talked about, Jason, was going to run a from the post and then back to the corner, and he didn't come out of his break very well. And as a quarterback, you have to see that. It might have been a great design, but you can see Pearson right there did not get out quickly. And so as a quarterback, you just simply have to throw that ball away, and Mangum got hit. Third down and long. Allen down the middle and nowhere near his intended target, Mulhart. So fourth down, Cooper Roth's long this year is 46, and it is raining in San Diego. What do you think? Yeah, and once again, it's going to be a long try, but it's the ball handling. It's the snap, and it's the holder in this particular case, and it have to get the ball has to get the ball down. So that's the going to be the interesting part, but also the footing of the kicker. Cooper Roth in this case. Nick Spore is the holder. And he had some trouble getting it down. Exactly as you said. Spore to throw and it's batted away. Longi got in front of it. And it's a turnover Wyoming. And this ball was slightly inside to Nick Spore. And, but he just had to re-catch it. And when you re-catch it with the timing of a kick, you simply can't get through the football in time. And Two out of seven, eight yards in his first start of the year for the sophomore out of Idaho, Tanner Mangum. Scanning the field, Mangum. Nice job by Laulu Kutatau to come back to the ball and create a first down BYU. Laulu Kutatau really is the fourth receiver in, and he plays the middle of the field. He takes place essentially at the tight end and does this very thing. Has its lone touchdown off the special teams error of Wyoming. Squally Canada darting through the defense to the third level and very close to midfield. And just like Sean Wick is a change up to Brian Hill in the Wyoming power game at the running back position, Canada is that to Williams. Pearson and Kurtz, the two wide receivers on third down, and they will run it with Williams, who is stacked up and dropped. Is that a call that suggests they'll go for it? Yeah, Ty Detmer told me that before the game, that Kalani Sataki will come up to him as the head coach and say, hey, you have two downs to get this, which certainly influences the third down call, and I think we see it on that play, although it seems like they might be able to, we're coming in to kick a field goal here. 
Well, Kalani Sataki, who has shown a penchant for the dramatic special teams decision, whether it's go for a fake punt or go for two on the offensive side in a key spot in the game, has decided instead to send out Red Almond and the field goal team. Long of 37 for Almond this year. This one from 27, and he is good. And Mitchell Jurgens was the holder. He's a wide receiver and did a great job of getting this down. This is what a good hold looks like, and Almond kicks it straight down Main Street. In terms of getting from point A to point B, receivers, I think, have that advantage. Cy Allen with the bare hands. It's third down for Wyoming. And Allen slings it over the middle for Hollister, who does have a first down for Wyoming. And we might see Hollister more in this second half. Line to gain in that first half was 6.8. That dog's not going to hunt, but third and two, you may be able to convert. From the 40. Hill up the middle has the first down for Wyoming. Ryan Hill, the ball carrier. Jason, that's why Wyoming was decent on third down throughout the year at 43%. You have to pitch it to the guy who's going to carry it more quickly than Allen did there. First full year as a starting quarterback for Allen. Play action fake. Loads of time. Allen whips it out for a first down of the 19-yard line. Josh Harshman with his fifth grab of the year, the sophomore on a Casper. On the fourth and short, Jacob Hollister was actually the prime target, the tight end going down the middle of the field. You can see Allen look at him there, and then he gets off to Harshman late. Once again, a very good read and an accurate pass coming out on time. If it's three by one and they over leverage the three sides, you have a single receiver down at the bottom. That would be a nice place to go. That's Mulhart. That's where Allen's looking. Now he flushes himself out of the pocket. Allen seeking the marker. Allen dives and we'll see where they mark him right around the nine yard line. This is going to be close. I think the spot Jason is going to bring him up about a yard short, maybe just inside a yard, but a very good decision once again by Allen. We talked about Mallhart, the one on one receiver, and then this was the result of that great decision. It depends on where Allen stepped out. And Wyoming runs a play very quickly there, not even worrying about the review, and ends up with a first down. I think it caught BYU by the surprise defensively. Hollister, the tight end in motion. Hill once again looking for the end zone. Touchdown! Thirty-fifth career touchdown for Brian Hill. You have to think, Jason, that was a very important drive for Wyoming offensively, and this is what Hill does. He gets yards after contact with the best of them. That was a muddy look from the beginning, but you saw his power in the end, and Wyoming got a good push into the end zone. Eight minutes, 25 seconds. Capped off in a four-yard touchdown. And the kind of drive you want in terms of balance. Josh Allen made some plays in the run game himself in the pass game, and then it was Brian Hill in that run game. The ruling of a touchdown is confirmed. That last look from behind the play that you saw at home is is what great running backs make a living at. It was a muddy look, and the result was Brian Hill, number five right there, gets in the end zone anyway. Didn't play the first quarter. You would imagine he'd have a lot in the tank for the fourth quarter. Again, an odd-looking exchange between the holder's score and his kicker, Roth. Eight minutes, 25 seconds. A fourth down conversion from Allen to Harshman to keep it going into the red zone for the first time tonight. Wyoming looking for its first win against BYU since 03 is on the board. And, uh, such a turnaround season this year. So it's been a lot of fun watching them come out here and uh, you know have a great successful season and get a bowl, bowl, bowl uh, bid. Coach Bull told me actually earlier. The Third down and two 
off a couple runs from Jamal Williams. Mangum off play action. Williams helped him with a block, and Mangum gets it out for a first down to Jonah Treneman, one of his favorite targets. Play action again. Mangum, his first start of the year, looking for Kurtz. And Nick Kurtz inside the five-yard line wins the battle. The San Diego native with a big hit for 39. First and goal, pending a marker. Well, Ty Detmer has definitely seen enough out of Wyoming's secondary. Pass interference, defense, number 21. That penalty decline, resolve the play, first down. That was the third play action pass on this drive. So run it effectively, and then Ty Detmer is trying to get after that secondary now. Under throw and use that frame. Mango on the run. Loves it. Tipped. Batted around. Touchdown. Tanner Baldry in the back of the end zone. Oh, my. Mangum with more heroics. Well, it was a horrific decision by Tanner Mangum to begin with, but... Tanner Baldery is going to end up bailing him out. But the safety, Andrew Wingert, I believe, is the first defender for Wyoming to get a hand on the ball. And you have to either intercept it or back this thing to the ground. And Baldery ended up coming down with it in the end zone after the quadruple ricochet. Two Hail Marys last year for Mangum against Nebraska and Boise State. This one with a much shorter field, but the same type of thing. There is some magic in Tanner Mangum and Tanner Baldery on the back end of it. BYU's back in. Josh Allen, 10 for 21, 82 yards. Dealing with pretty good field position off the kick out of bounds. Allen on the run, takes the slide and gets decked, and here come the flags. Micah Hanneman took the shot, and he'll get whistled. Could be a targeting call coming as well. the play personal foul unnecessary roughness with targeting defense number seven the ruling of targeting is under further video review so Jason Mike Micah Hanneman unnecessary roughness with targeting that's an interesting scenario so as the quarterback slides you can no longer hit him when he gives himself up so that's the unnecessary roughness but then it was the targeting as well either the crown of the helmet Michael Hanneman would have hit the quarter sliding quarterback somewhere else or not with the crown of his helmet. It could have been just a necessary roughness. Flea flicker off the penalty, and Allen is intercepted. Picked off by Dion Lake. He had a pick six against Boise State. That's his third interception of the year, and it's a big one. This is the risk calling this type of play. It's kind of the quick transition play, the flea flicker. But sometimes young quarterbacks, when you call a play like this, they think it's a given. As a quarterback, you still have to read it. And there was absolutely nothing here. The give to Hill and the pitch back to the quarterback. And you can see it very well defended. And I don't know that the quarterback, Josh Allen, actually saw Dion Lake outside. but. I saw Dion Lake make a big play for BYU there. Mangum play action. Mangum over the middle, and this is brought in. Colby Pearson at the 41-yard line. And this is where Tanner Mangum is different than Taysom Hill. 
when Tanner Mangum gets on the move, he's still looking to throw the ball down the field. Third and six, BYU trying to salt this game away and make it eight in a row against Wyoming. It's Jamal Williams breaking free. Williams into open space, into the end zone. His final college game is going swimmingly in his home state. Wyoming was loading up thinking it was going to be a pass and then it's a hat on a hat up front Jamal Williams has that burst and then Jonah Trinneman puts Antonio Hall on the backside and Walt Williams just really waltzes into the end zone a wide receiver working hard down the field was able to get Williams all the way to pay dirt nearing 200 yards for Jamal Williams who was dinged up this year took a year off for personal reasons Jamal Williams 36 yards Trinneman got him in you love wide receivers that work down field they a lot of times turn five or six into a touchdown like this top 10 rush defense BYU this year Hill on the toss. Brian Hill surging across the 50-yard line at a first down. Carton. I'd like Gentry number four. He's the slot up to the top. He should be able to find his own a void in that zone in the back end. It's a run instead, and Hill is driven back. Forward progress stopped at the 39-yard line. You got to go for this, right? Yeah, I think you do, and I think that's exactly why that call was what it was you spread it out you try to thin out the defense and give it to Hill knowing that you're probably in two down territory anyway and gonna go for it right here and Craig Bull simply seems to be doing it might have been a generous spot as well fourth down and two for Wyoming Wick in the backfield Wick has the first down and then some to the 25 yard line Wyoming still has a pulse as he's finally dragged down well beyond the line of scrimmage and Wyoming will run some RPO some run pass options but this looked to be a draw from the get-go 61 Caden Jackson will determine whether he makes the decision to go for it or not quick throw and he's got it to Gentry, Allen to Gentry across the 10-yard line. And a first and goal coming for Wyoming off the hit from Takanaka. First round, round grade, second round grade, or go back to school. And that might be the best option for Brian Hill. Allen, end zone, Gentry got the foot in, touchdown. That's where you see the arm talent by Josh Allen. It was a high-low concept. The tight end, Jacob Hollister, was underneath that second level, and Gentry was over the top. And then that quick release and that arm talent that you see of Josh Allen able to get that ball in there. Another long drive for Wyoming. First touchdown drive was 8.25. This is six and a half. For the Cowboys, Tanner Gentry, who's into the end zone for the 13th time this year. The big play guy for Wyoming makes it a two-score game in San Diego. This run for Williams across the 40-yard line. Jamal Williams breaks it into plus territory. What a game for Jamal Williams. He's over 200 yards. Well, we knew this would be Jamal Williams' time, and when isn't it time for number 21 to carry the football? But once again, it's a physical approach by BYU on the line of scrimmage in... Wyoming's got a chance here. Third and ten. You get a stop. Who knows? Even a turnover, obviously, would be better if you're Wyoming. We've created a couple of them already today. Mangum on the roll. 
Defon chasing after him, and Mangum spikes it into the turf. Likely punt time for BYU, and Wyoming holds the line in a key moment. He'd be special just like he was at the end of last season. Here's Wyoming, down 10. Allen finds his way out of the pocket and has Mulhart on the sideline. Nice work by Allen to create some space and a gain of 11 as a first down. All three timeouts conserved for Wyoming. Allen to throw. Gentry is open in front of Dion Lake at the 40-yard line first down, Cowboys. Good design there. Three wide receivers out wide and then... The running back, Brian Hill, goes in motion that way and it frees up Gentry in the middle of those receivers. Sets up third down and 20. A lot of time. Allen, sideline. He's got a man, Walhart, with a first down. was initially going on a vertical down the sideline and Josh Allen does a great job of climbing in the pocket and Mal it's a top 10 run defense Hill under four yards a carry tonight third down for Allen off the pump feeling pressure Allen lofts it this is a touchdown Tanner Gentry again This is what Josh Allen is going to consistently bring to the table in the future at Laramie. He moves around enough to get throws off, and then he has the arm tap. This is dropping a dime over top of coverage. Dion Lake has the coverage, and then Tanner Gentry makes a great adjustment. He sees his quarterback get out of the pocket to his side, so he goes to the corner, as you're taught to do, and it was great timing and a tremendous throw by Josh Allen. 14 touchdowns this year for Tanner Gentry. Two in the second half in San Diego. Here come the Cowboys against their rival from Provo. Tanner Manga very efficient last year. Shy of 10 yards on throws. And he will run play action. Mangum rolling out. He takes the sack. That keeps the clock going, forces the timeout. Kevin Prosser, the sack leader for the Cowboys, took him down and the final timeout for Wyoming. Which is more valuable, the yardage or the clock there, Kel? I think you, you don't want to give up yardage like that that now puts your punter in jeopardy when he has to punt the football. I think this puts Tanner Mangum, Mangum in a bad situation. Allen had a game-winning touchdown in their opener against Northern Illinois in multiple overtimes to start this season. He leads the drive and swings it out for Hill with some running room. Brian Hill stays in bounds and now takes himself out on his feet on a big gain on first down on a swing pass. And we see that rivalry kind of rearing its ugly head. It's getting chippy down there. Good decision by Josh Allen. Took his time, had the protection, looked down the field, nothing's there. Throw it out on time on target to your running back, Hill. Gives him yards after the catch. 135 loads of time for Wyoming, nearing field goal range for Cooper Roth. Allen, pump fake. Out of the pocket. Allen looking downfield. Intercepted. Kai Nakua picks it off. A high-risk throw. And BYU's interception leader salts it away in San Diego. So many times this year, Jason, when Kainakua or BYU needed a big play, it was the safety Kainakua that would come up with it. A former high school quarterback, his instincts in the back end in coverage are off the chart, the anticipation. And Josh Allen, the young quarterback, he couldn't afford to do either of two things, take a sack or throw the ball in harm's way. And that simply and obviously was a catastrophic decision. Kainakua 
came into this game sixth in the nation in interceptions. He has his sixth against the first-year full-time starter. Throw the ball away. You can't take a sack, nor can you throw it late, over the middle, into harm's way, or a guy like that, a ball hawk like Kainakua, is going to find it, and he's going to make you pay for it. In the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, BYU 24-21, your final score for Paul Carcaterra, Kelly Stauffer, Jason Benetti, our entire crew. Now we go to Sports Center. Scott Van Pelt's got it for you.